Greetings. One of the questions that I often get asked about is the relationship between uh, natural and synthetic drugs. You know, which is best is usually the subtext of what I'm being asked. So we have a, a variety of different psychoactives, a variety of different substances, psychedelic substances that can be used for all kinds of different purposes. And of course people will often talk about the value of plant medicine, they'll often talk about um, how things like you know ayahuasca or cannabis or mushrooms, any of these things are particularly good because they are, quotes, natural. In many respects I'd agree with that. I would say that the opportunity to grow one's own psychoactive, psychedelic plants, to f go and hunt them in the landscape, to uh, have that re deep relationship with them is a really valuable thing. But whether or not they are better in any sense is open to debate and I think says more about our ideas of nature and culture than it does anything about the drugs themselves. So you can take an example, you could take something like uh, a substance which through uh, an admittedly fairly complex chemical preparation is turned into a very very powerful psychedelic but nevertheless comes from an organic source. LSD is the obvious example of this. Now is that less natural than something like ayahuasca, which of course doesn't occur in nature and is a blend using complex human technology, fire. Uh, one might argue that that's the basic technology that makes our species different from all the other species on the planet, is our conscious use of fire. So ayahuasca is a, a blend of two substances, uh, at least, uh, which doesn't occur in nature. Um, although, of course, things like psilocin, psilocybin have very, very, very similar effects to the way that ayahuasca operates. Something that's natural has the opportunity for uh, cultivation but also the opportunity for over exploitation, cultural appropriation, environmental devastation, all of these sorts of things. Equally something that's produced in a laboratory environment, particularly it has to be said if it's a clandestine laboratory, uh, may well have a uh, prayers that have been made over it, spells that have been made over it, special music may have been pl um, played. When LSD is, is um, conventionally produced in clandestine laboratories, many of the people that I've spoken to who've done that sort of work tell me that they use particular ritual preparation, uh, especially when it comes to the crystallization uh, phase of the process. And of course those individuals are often being, being exposed to the medicine as they're manufacturing it. So this is definitely a, a ritual preparation in exactly the same way that the preparation of ayahuasca, um, so the pounding of the plants, the brewing and burning and stirring and all of those things is part of the ritual preparation for LSD just as, it, uh, as much as it is for uh, the jungle uh, psychedelic potion. I think there's also reasons why you might want uh, a psychedelic of a very, very measured and known dose. So if you're doing um, clinical work, you're doing work in a medical context, you may want the known uh, dose of a substance rather than what can be significant variability that can come with uh, a material that's been harvested from a natural environment. And I think that in a broader sense you can think about the idea of what is natural. Uh, I once had the opportunity, uh, the honour of, of having Alexander Shulgin come to uh, a lecture that I gave in Bath and he walked in and he sat down and uh, of course I was completely overawed, fantastic, it's, 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 it's um, uh, Alexander Shulgin's listening to me talk, brilliant, he looks like he might well be a person. So that suggests that he's part of nature, he's an outpouring of nature. And so the substances that he produced uh, are themselves also an outpouring of nature, a specialist one, admittedly. But he's the alchemist, he's making this stuff. And um, is he really fundamentally any different from a plant that metabolises a substance uh, and puts it into its leaves, let's say? There's an interesting thing, of course, which is that there have been a few examples of substances that have been discovered uh, or manufactured in laboratories that have then subsequently been discovered in natural sources, in organic sources. And there are many, many, many plants and indeed many animals 
that we haven't investigated and we don't know what their psychoactive or psychedelic potentials might be. I think what's probably more important than whether or not something is natural or artificial is to do with the method of production and the method of distribution. So if you have a substance that comes to you in a way that you feel is good, is whole, has got a good heart behind it, then that's the thing to go for. And whether or not that's been cooked up in an alchemist's laboratory or whether or not that's a substance that's been traded over thousands of miles, if it's been harvested in a way that makes minimal damage to the environment and has been cultivated and bought and sold in a way that makes a minimal impact, a negative impact on the people uh, associated with that story and you can hand on heart say you feel that this is a good medicine then that probably matters more than whether or not it was manufactured in a lab or whether or not it was cultivated on a hillside in a far distant land. Ahoy.